Hi, welcome to the Boston Roll channel. I'm your host, Brian Koval. Before we get started, make sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons. If you want to see me play your favorite deck or your spicy brew on the channel, I take donation deck lists. I'll do a deck tech, play a full Magic Online League, and help tune your list. If that sounds good, check out my contact info. It's in the video description below. Now let's go play some Magic. Welcome back to another Bosch and Roll video. Today I'm playing Legacy, and this is Bug Midrange. This is from Hunter on Patreon. And this is a pretty classic take. Uh, all of the, the hotness of Modern Horizons 2 has been bombarding us. Just spawning all sorts of new archetypes, crazy upgrades to old ones. And here we have just an honest Tarmogoyf deck. So this one is a little... This isn't Delver. Uh, there's no Delvers in the deck. There is a Daze, though. Or there's three Dazes. So that the Daze is a nod to how we're trying to play this game. Like, this is not one of these late-game, life-from-the-loam, take-over-everything, Raven's Crime sort of bug decks. This is definitely trying to play right in the middle. It is, in fact, bug midrange. So, Tarmogoyf, a card that's been seemingly forgotten lately, but with all the artifacts in the format right now, Urza Saga uh, encourages people to play artifacts. It is itself an enchantment that goes to the graveyard after three turns. Like, it's a good time to be a Tarmogoyf. I, the... The occasional Tarmogoyf I've seen has been pretty consistently a 6-7. I've even seen a 7-8. So this is a, a, it's a juicy one. So Tarmogoyf's in the deck. We got Scavenging Ooze, Baleful Strix, Leovold, and Uro that can, and Plague Engineer that can win the game around it. Uh, mostly we're planning on Tarmogoyf and Uro to actually do our beating, but we could get into control games. Uh, I expect our Delver matchup is pretty solid. Getting wasted out is basically the way that I can see us losing to Delver because this is a mid-range deck, which means it's not going to have the time to set up basic lands the way that a control Uro deck would. So uh, we are on the, the mono non-basic strat here, but that's all right because we have the full Arnold Palmer set of Golgari removal spells, two Abrupt Decay, two Assassin's Trophy, two Witherbloom Command. And Command is the card that Hunter really wanted me to take for a spin. It's a card I've wanted to try myself. So this is Choose 2, Sorcery. Target player mills 3, then you return a land card from your graveyard to your hand. So uh, in a pinch, if none of the other modes look good, you can rebuy a wasteland or just hit a land drop. Destroy target non-creature non-land permanent with mana value 2 or less. I mean, that that's why we're playing the card. It, it's just a removal spell. Target creature gets minus three, minus one until end of turn. So this could reasonably kill two things. Like if you destroy target uh, Sylvan Library and take a Delver with it, like that, that's pretty good. And then target opponent loses two life, you gain two life, which might seem like flavor text, but this gives bug decks a reach, which in the past, if you stabilize at one life against bug and the board is empty, you're safe. Like, there's no lightning bolt coming. Uh, like, one was as good as 20 if they didn't have a creature in play. But that's just not the case anymore. Witherbloom Command can go to the dome for a nice little drain. So that's the card that we're really test running here. And the rest of this, pretty standard stuff. In the sideboard, I have a Dothy Voidwalker because I wanted to try it. Hunter had a second Scavenging Ooze in the board, and Voidwalker serves a similar function. It's not quite as good at playing catch up as Ooze is, and it's not going to come in in like fair creature matchups the way Ooze would, but it's a new card and I want to take it for a run, so let's do that. And I have Hercules Recall, which has not seen a whole lot of legacy play. It's a vintage staple. It's in a lot of vintage main decks, in fact, because shops is such a problem in vintage. But Urza Saga, existing in the legacy format, Fair decks like this are not going to beat Nerza Saga. It, it's just not going to happen. Like, if your opponent goes Saga into Ancient Tomb, and then they make a 1-1, make a 2-2, Saga triggers their 3-3s, three they have two 3-3s, three and they haven't done anything or cast a spell yet. And, and that's assuming they didn't play a Mox Opal, now they're 4-4s, four or like literally anything else, now they're 5-5s. Five like... Urza Saga outclasses Tarmogoyf very quickly, and you just can't beat the Saga decks playing fair. And this deck is ultimately pretty fair. So Hercules Recall gives us a reset button, also just a 
clear your shit crunch for 10 sort of button. So I'm going to try it. Hopefully we play against some Saga decks and it actually gets its mileage because like I said, it's not really a legacy card because it doesn't really have a place in the meta. And outside of uh, outside of Urza Saga, it's going to be a brick in the sideboard. So let's hope we play against it at least once and we get our blowout. And of course, Sudden Edict. Uh, there was a Liliana's Triumph in the sideboard. This is just like mostly the same thing except they can't counter it uh the one big difference is that liliana's triumph is each opponent sacks a creature and this is target player so something like veil of summer or a leyline of sanctity uh, that sort of thing can stop sudden edict where it wouldn't stop liliana's triumph but they would have to veil before this because obviously it has split second and they can't respond to it so just a little bit of give and take. It's not quite strictly better, but it is close to being strictly better. Uh, I saw a screenshot from Phil Gallagher killing a Monastery Mentor with this when the opponent had open mana, where Edicts have historically been embarrassing against Mentor. This one just shredded that thing. So let's see how this one plays. Those are the new cards. The main deck's pretty standard. The Witherbloom Command being the, the newest thing we're trying in there. That's the deck. Let's get into these games. We are on the play against JPA93, who is famously a show-and-tell player, sneak and show specifically. This hand does not really do anything, and is bad, so I'm going to mulligan it. This one's pretty good against show-and-tell. I mean, I have a force negation. I can wasteland an ancient tomb if they hang one out there, but yeah, this is a, a good start. And even if, even if uh, he's not on show-and-tell... We're still playing the game here. So I'll take the Daze as a second layer of protection. Witherbloom Command coming. Not super excited about that, but I have Brainstorm to send it all away. <laughs> well, we're not playing against Show and Tell. That's the, uh, the give and take of being a deck specialist. Sometimes you're just not on that deck. Sometimes people know what to keep against you. Sometimes they don't. It's all good, though. This hand is not bad. All right, what well, deck has Basic Island and Wasteland in it? Could it just be Blue Red Delver. So uh, that's something to be ready for. I don't think I could just play Wasteland and wait. Or yeah, I think I'm just going to hold my horses on this Brainstorm. I could Brainstorm in the main phase, try to hit a fetch land and keep it moving. But I can hard cast Days if I want to. And this Witherbloom command can clear Delver. All right, I'm going for the the brainstorm, I guess. Uh, I probably want the the trop because if I brainstorm into Black Source Fatal Push, I want to be able to cast it. I right, didn't find the Fatal Push. I don't need three wastelands. Probably didn't need one or two wastelands, honestly. Uh, I can ship the. Yeah, I think the Force of Negation is the worst card in the hand right now by a pretty considerable margin. And can't cast anything else, but here we go. Delver flipped, of course, always flips. But they didn't want Brainstorm. That's interesting. It's usually a pretty good card, but I guess they're just not in the market for it. Uh, Delver in for three. Witherbloom Command, notably, um, destroy target non-creature, non-land permanent with mana value two or less. So I can't kill Delver with this anymore. Look at this crazy Ragavan. I've never seen that art before. Pretty sweet. Right, so I'm going to get Underground C. Yes, that is the, the correct one. Shuffle away those bad Brainstorm cards. I can play around all kinds of soft permission with the second wasteland here. So what modes do I want? I think I want minus three, minus one and mill three, pick up a card because I do need to hit my land drops. All right. Who do I mill? Is there any reason to mill them? Uh, oh, they have probably have ethereal forger or murktide regent or dragon's rage channeler. So I'm definitely going to mill myself and target Ragavan. Green, black. So how many forces do you have? I can beat one. Can't beat two. My daze is 
getting out of here. Jeez. All right. Well, we're going to Monkey Town. Uh, they pitched a brainstorm and a daze to those two things. Okay. So hard mode activated. The cool thing is they've fetched basics so aggressively that Assassin's Trophy, they might not even be able to search for anything. The bad news is, oh, uh, they expressive iteration. That's a good reload. They flipped Misty Rainforest off of Ragavan, which uh, you may cast that card. So Ragavan can't steal lands. It can only steal spells. They exiled Scalding Tarn, hit their land drop with it. And into my turn we go. All right, so I can put this Leovold onto the stack where if they lightning bolt it, I draw a card. But if they lightning bolt it, like I just take five. So I think I want to just trophy. I think Delver is the thing I want to trophy because it's hitting harder. It's harder for me to answer with other spells. Do I want to let them untap? If they have force and negation, they can hard cast it if they untap. If they have force and negation, they can just pitch cast it on my turn, but at least that costs them two spells. But if they have something like no, they're not going to have something like Flusterstorm. Or, like I'm, I'm playing. I've played well around Flusterstorm just by drawing so many lands. All right. So green, black, hit the Delver. All right, Delver's dead. They do have a third basic land in the deck. They're probably about out of those. So now I just got to hope that Ragavan doesn't steamroll too hard, or I draw another answer to it. Like if they just keep flipping lands off of this. Oh shit. I don't play any basic lands in my deck. And if they have that soul read and just strip mine me here, ouch. Well, they had the read. Yeah, there's none in there. Well played. Uh, ponder. So I'm looking for fatal push mostly. Scavenging Ooze. I don't hate Scavenging Ooze. I like Uro a lot. Okay. I'm going to take the Ooze. Oh god. I just realized I put Uro on top of my deck for Ragavan. Does that matter? Um, no, because if they Uro, it ends up in my graveyard. Alright, I'm not going to shuffle. And Scavenging Ooze just gets bolted. But at least that's one bolt they don't have for... Leovold. Lightning Bolt. Oh, they're just going face. I must be dead. Just triple bolt. Oh, Ragavan's getting in. Yeah, that's an easy block from me. Give me that arrow. Or do they have the double bolt? Oh, it's just second Ragavan. That makes sense. That's one way to use your legendary creature. Murktide Regent. Alright, that's an 8-8. Jeez. Alright, yep, not winning this one. Uh, I'm not even going to show them the Uro. Alright, yeah, that was pretty good. <laughs> That's the first time I've lost to Ragavan. This set's been out for a week and a half at the time of this recording, and Ragavan finally showed up. Alright, Flusterstorm, Carpet of Flowers, Hydroblast, Run Afoul, uh, target, players, or target opponent sacks a creature with flying. So they have a lot of those between Delver and Regent. Uh, Sudden Edict, Uncounterable removal, count it, love it. Uh, Plague Engineer can name monkey or uh, human. So th this is the tier list of what I'm going to bring in. I will make room for these seven cards, and then Plague Engineer is a maybe, and Veil of Summer is a maybe, maybe. So Force Negation is bad. I don't like this many Force of Wheels either. I do want some number because Murktide Regent is the sort of card that can overpower. But I do have two trophies, Edict and Run Afoul, so I'm not just like dead to a resolved region either, which is pretty nice. Um, I'm not sure if I have time for Sylvan Library in this matchup. Uh, that one, I, I have a lot of ways to draw cards anyway uh i i like i want to get onto uro for the most part so 
And this deck is actually, looking at this deck on paper, it actually lines up pretty well against Delver. Uh, we just uh, kept a hand that was good against Show and Tell. And that was part of the problem. Right. The Wastelands actually were not good. They don't really help cast my spells. I, like, look at the mana costs in this deck. There's not very many colorless mana pips. It's Uro, Plague Engineer, Tarmogoyf, Ooze, and Daze. And that's it. Everything else just costs colors. So Wasteland doesn't even really count as a land here. And it wasn't particularly helpful as a spell either. So do I want to go off of a, another Wasteland, just play 19 lands against this deck? I mean, they do have Wasteland and Days also, which is a little bit concerning. The alternative is I cut another Force and keep the Wasteland. I think that playing around Days is going to be pretty important. Okay, this is what I'm going to do. I'm not sold if it's the best thing we can do, but it's what, I'm, it's what I've done. Let's go. All right, Fatal Push was the missing sauce last game. So Baleful Strix does interact favorably with Murktide Regent in that it blocks it. And yeah, it doesn't matter what fetch land I lead on because I don't have any basics in the deck. Got to get used to that. <laughs> Usually I'm like, okay, there's an island and a swamp, but there's just not, there's none of that stuff. There's Delver. I'm going to go to my turn and Fatal Push Delver. So I think I want to do it off Underground Sea because that casts the Brainstorm next turn. And if they want to force will this, it's not a huge deal because I have the Abrupt Decay lined up. Dashing a Ragavan here would be pretty cool. All right, they're not dashing. They are wasting me though. God, I hate playing decks that are this soft to wasteland. Just not used to it always being a blowout every time. Well, now we might just lose. Uh, if this Brainstorm doesn't give me what I need, could have some problems. Or if they daze it. Right, they didn't daze it, and we found a million lands. That's that's all pretty fortunate. Uh, Leovold's not going to be part of this game for quite some time. And then I am going to get my Ponder on the stack off of Underground Sea. If I keep the lands coming, I think I can win this game. Um... Do I want this daze? No, I just want to shuffle this deck. Okay, here we go. So if they waste me, no matter what, what they target, I can still Abrupt Decay next turn. But this Witherbloom command might be really good. They are in Delver as a 1-1 mode. I uh, drew the daze that I made, may or may not have wanted anyway. All right, so I'm going to do the mill three, pick up a land thing, and... Minus three, minus one. Target myself, target Delver. Green, black. Nice. All right, so I just want my Underground Sea back. I'm not going to get fancy with a fetch land. I already have one of those. Sudden Edict just hit the bin, though, so I do have to be extremely careful of Murktide Regent because that was my answer to it. So I, I can afford to brainstorm here. I have enough lands that I can send one away. Are we getting uh, pyroblasted? Yeah, that's not a huge deal. My hand's full of gas. All right, pyroblast is countered. I'm gonna cast Strix here. Like the abrupt decay, I can cast any time. So I just want to get this creature into play, make them spend a removal spell on it, and get a two for one. Uh, they, I got my two for one. They get in with their one one creature, Dragon's Rage Channeler. I've been seriously unimpressed with Dragon's Rage Channeler. Like, we were pretty big on that card on Eternal Glory, and it just has not delivered. Speaking of not delivering, got a lot of a lot of shit in my deck right now. Uh, a lot of lands. Uh, hitting that Brainstorm Fire Blast was really good. It wasn't a huge deal, like we're not just dying here, but it was a big deal insofar as I have now drawn two lands in a row when brainstorming them away would have been great. Notice they're on mono non-basics this game after me just losing because I drew three wastelands in the first game. Take my one from Channeler, still a 1-1. One, one. 
This feels like a regent. This is gonna hurt. Yeah, brutal. Alright, so I need to find Assassin's Trophy. Like, immediately. So I'm gonna decay Ragavan. That one needs to go. If I find Trophy, they have one card in hand. Sure, you got me. Come on, Trophy. Scavenging Ooze. What are the words on this regent? Whenever an instant or sorcery leaves your graveyard. Okay. So, Scavenging Ooze. I can still eat creatures and gain life by time. Uh, let me see what how many green sources are left in this deck. There's a Bayou and a Trop. Alright, I'll grab a Bayou. I have Trop ready. I'm going to eat Ragavan right now, and... I guess I also eat Delver right now to play around Lightning Bolt. I don't think they're going to get Delirium anytime soon. They only have lands in the graveyard. But I am dead very quickly to this regent. So, got to find that Assassin's Trophy. Another Delver. If that flips, it could hurt. I think having the fetch land in case I find Brainstorm is more important. Yikes. So, I can... Gain some amount of life off the ooze. I think I should be attacking. So there's Strix. Oh, Strix is my only creature in the graveyard. No, I should not be attacking. All right. Bummer. All right, Delver didn't flip. I'm glad I didn't attack. Petty theft. All right, so I have to exile Strix. Gain some life. That was that was a good one. There's no other creatures in the graveyard. I guess I can exile some of their cards just in case that matters. All right, I should let Dragon Rage Channeler trigger resolve first. And I'm at ten, six, seven, eight. Uh, I'm going to Hydro Blast Dragon's Rage Channeler in response to Petty Theft because if they respond to this, I can I can daze. All right, they just let it die. That's fine. All right, ooze is in my hand. All right, I still need to draw Assassin's Trophy. Like, that's just still the play. Trophy. Bummer. All right. Crushed. Yep, that's the first time on uh, my channel that we've seen Blue Red Delver do its thing. Uh, I was X and O against the deck up to this point. But, I mean, it's really good when it goes off. Um, the Ragavan was pretty solid game one. Dragon's Rage Channeler continues to just be terrible. Like, I think that card's bad. First time I've seen Murktide Regent in action, just arriving as an 8-8 on an empty board was a pretty big game in game number one. So that was impressive. On to the next round. I'm on the draw in round number two, and we have sort of the, the mid-range side of the deck here. Uh, there is a Daze or the Leovold, which is... Kind kind of some friction. You don't really want to cast Daze in a game where you're planning to cast three drops. But this is the, the juicier side of the deck. Alright, we got a once upon a time from the opponent. Heritage Druid. Alright, well, it's a good deck to have Jeez. It it's a good deck to have three plague engineers in your 75 against. Uh it's bad to be on the draw against them though. Witherbloom Command is likely to do two things. Uh, it can kill the Allosaurus Shepherd. All of that assumes that I even get a second turn, though, because if they just go Heritage Druid Cradle Glimpse, I could die. And they know they get to do all that because Allosaurus Shepherd is nonsense. Yeah, this card, like, I'm generally the type of person who's just like, yeah, magic cards are magic cards. We're playing Legacy. Things are allowed to be powerful. But the more I see this card and play against it and just think about it, the more insane it becomes. Like, it's just complete BS. <laughs> like, can't be countered. None of your other spells can be countered. Also, just win con attached. It's very strange that this card was printed at all. Do I think it's ban worthy? Not particularly. Like, but it does just send elves into the freaking stratosphere all right so they are glimpsing it's looking like a value glimpse like i they don't have anything that untaps right now they didn't have cradle uh, i guess if they have a second query and ranger right now they can keep going okay they just left mana floating and passed the turn they never want to do that 
All right, here we go. So I can play this, and what does Witherbloom Command do? It kills a creature without ramping them. I guess that's the important part here. So I'm going to zap the Shep, and I guess the, the mill and draw a card is still, or mill and pick up a card is still the best mode for me. Uh, I'll mill three. Do I even care about milling three? Oh yeah, I have a row in my deck, sure. That makes sense. Green, black, kill the Shep. I mill, draw a card, or pick up a card. Okay, here we go. I can counter spells now, which hopefully gives them some pause, though Daze is gonna, not going to line up well against the Heritage Druid. They are down to two cards in hand, though, and if they didn't find something good, they could be in trouble. Yeah, just attack for three. That's what I want right now. I guess they would attack for two because they're obviously just going to get Cradle with Reclaimer. So this would be a good time to find a Wasteland. I could also just hold up Trophy for the Cradle. Okay, so I got some choices here. I can just jam Uro, hope for the best. Or I can Uro into Ponder. I could try to Ponder and find a Wasteland. I could just play Leovold, which turns off Glimpse of Nature in a pretty significant way. I think that Uro is the play, though. So I'm going to Uro and then... If I find Wasteland, I'll just sit it in play. If I don't find Wasteland, I'll cast Ponder, hoping to find a Force of Will. All right, so they're rotating now. I'm not sure why. I, in case Wasteland wasn't on my radar, it definitely is now. Show me the Wasteland. All right, didn't find Wasteland. It's all right. It was unlikely anyway. Now I'm looking for a Force. Underground C. Come on, Ponder, find me a Force of Will. I'll take a Negation also. Oh, Fatal Push, you're a little late. I'm going to shuffle this, because I really want one of my six Forces to show up. Oh, give me one more turn. Come on now. So they had five mana last turn and didn't cast a spell. They have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight mana now. Oh, please let me daze a Crater Hoof Behemoth. <laughs> Give it to me. Though just attacking for two again would be great. All right. It looks like we're going to get into Plague Engineer and have Assassin's Trophy back up. Symbiote. Uh, yeah, that's, that's fine. Symbiote with Reclaimer is pretty interesting, but the Plague Engineer does a whole lot of work here. Obviously, their deck is called Elves. There, it does contain elves. Um, I could fatal push symbiote. No, I'm just gonna sit on my removal. Engineer, here we go. Game one. While they're sort of spinning their wheels over there, so they fetched Bayou in response. Uh, they're rotating again in response. Why? Uh, do they have a Pendlehaven? But that doesn't actually do anything. Is there a Bajukabog in the main deck? Are they going to wipe out my arrow? Okay. Sure. That means Cradle chats for mana even if I kill all their creatures. But I'm not going to kill all their creatures. I don't know. Weird. I guess they can pick up an elf to rotate again. That's probably the plan because they want to activate... Oh, they're picking up a forest. Oh, they're picking up their cradle. That's freaking sweet. Okay, now I get it. Now I get it. They can cradle twice. All right, since they picked up a different elf, now I can fatal push this elf. Let's see if they play a Sajiri step. So they rotated their bayou away. Got a second cradle. So push this elf and kill this elf and... The elf in their hand is stranded there. I'm definitely just naming elf. I'm not going to get cute and try to name insect and like, haha, you bounced all your elves. What will you do now? Because elves are just how they play this game. All right, so they have two mana available right now. Days is back on the menu, possibly. Depending on how this turn plays out. 
Their hand is Cradle and Quirion Ranger. All right, they conceded. Nice. Uh, we got pretty lucky in the early turns. Their glimpse didn't really go anywhere, and then they didn't really have a follow-up. Gave me time to buy. But the main deck Plague Engineer, coming in clutch. Trust the old bug. Nothing beats bug. Right, Plague Engineer is in the deck. Uh, Bail, Library, Surgical, Edict. Sudden Edict is like kind of embarrassing because they have so many creatures. But if they do try to like cheese out a quick Progenitus, that's a way to actually win. I like Narset as just another way to fight um, Glimpse. The counter spells are all pretty bad because of Shepard. Uh, like, normally I would keep all my Force of Wills in at least, but Shepard just makes it a liability. If they don't have Shepard, Force is pretty good. If they do have Shepard, Force is a huge blank. And, you know, what are you going to do? Uh, that That is the power of the card. I do think Days sucks, especially on the draw, regardless of Shepard against elves so i think i i do want flusterstorm and veil yeah veil because they're going to bring in abrupt decays for my plague engineer and they might bring in thoughtsies uh probably not for this matchup i wouldn't but they are going to have abrupt decays because they've seen the the engineer so i have one slot left here could have library if, but I don't really think the game's going to go that long. Dothy Voidwalker does not interact. If this could block, if it was just a 3-2 not shadow, I would probably bring it in. But it is a 3-2 shadow instead. Alright, my deck has enough removal that I think I can count on killing Allosaurus Shepherd where it matters and letting my counter spells do their work. So that's the plan I'm going to move on. Alright, let's go. Yeah, I don't play a lot of decks that have like eight two mana, two or less mana spot removal spells. That's pretty generous. I'm going to keep this. It's just a hand with removal spells in it and a cantrip. I, I can answer their first cradle. Tarmogoyf is moat in the matchup. But so is Wirewood Symbiote on the other side, so we both have a moat in our deck. I don't think they saw Wasteland in game one, but they should probably assume I have it like so. Alright, this looks like, yeah, this is a Zenith for zero. I think the play is kill Dryad Arbor. Just waste it. Yeah, I'm just gonna fire off the Wasteland on Dryad Arbor. Because that represents so much mana. It's not just one because of the land. Like, wasting Bayou is one mana, but Dryad Arbor is a creature for Cradle, taps for green itself, it's a target for Quirion Ranger or Wirewood Symbiote to untap multiple times in a turn. All of those are, are real big problems. Speaking of Quirion Ranger, there it is. So they have Cradle and two creatures now. One of them is Quirion Ranger. They're currently representing one, two, three, four mana. So kind of scary. It's time to find a Force of Will, and I did immediately. Thanks, deck. I want the Underground C. Yeah, I think I want C because that casts Fatal Push if I find it. Though, if I have to cantrip into a Fatal Push, I think I want the Tropical Island. Because I'm going to shuffle any Ponder that doesn't have a land. Does this matter? Does this even make sense? Am I saying anything right now? All right, I think I just want Underground C. I feel like there might be some, like, second iteration of what I just said that results in me actually wanting the the tropical island. Like, okay, so if I found Fatal Push but not land off this ponder, like, okay, so if I had to shuffle the ponder and it hit Fatal Push, and then I draw a ponder on my next turn. I would want to ponder off of Tropical Island, finding the Black Source for Fatal Push. I think that's what my brain was trying to get to, but that's that's a much deeper path than I originally thought it was, and I think just getting the C is the right call. Cool. Good thing I found that Force of Will. Well, they attacked already, so I'm not dying this turn. I'll take that as a big win. I guess they can still Natural Order right now. 
Let's hope that they're just trying to hit this land job because it's free and they don't actually have the natural order. Yikes. That's rough. Uh, it's not... It's actually not that bad. Um, my plan is to get Plague Engineer into play next turn anyway. And I can hold up Assassin's Trophy, target the Shepherd, and make spells counterable. So hopefully they just jam Natural Order on the stack right now. Kind of rooting for that to happen. Oh, whoops. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. They could have 15'd me here, uh, 16 me, and I just forgot about that mode of the card for a second. Whoops. So Witherbloom Command actually would have given me the guaranteed land for Plague Engineer here, so maybe I should have just moved in on that. But I still lose the natural order if I do that. So I can Trophy Symbiote here, which does ramp them, but they clearly don't have a spell. So yeah, I'm just going to take out Symbiote. And then that lets me untap and Witherbloom Command the Shep. Yeah, that makes sense. And then I have Force of Well up on my turn. But if I just draw a land, I can jam uh, Plague Engineer and none of it matters. All right, minus three, minus one, and rebuy a land. Target me, target you. One, two, three, four, five. They can't make it a six, six or a five, five in response. So go after the Shepherd. I could just pick up the Wasteland, hit the Cradle, and then they can't do much. But I'm holding Force of Will, and yeah, I'm holding Force of Will, so I'm just going to hope they don't have a second Shepherd into Natural Order. But their hand didn't have either of those cards last turn, so it's unlikely to have both of them this turn. I just to land. They need a spell to attack with Nettle Sentinel. That's a pretty good spell. But it is the la it does leave them with one card in their hand. And they would have played Shepherd first if their card in hand was Shepherd. So they have either So they have like Abrupt Decay, Land. I think Abrupt Decay and Land are the only things that make sense to be in their hand right now. They would have played anything else. Alright, let's So options include Brainstorm to hit my land drop. Uh, I don't need three Tarmogoyfs here. I am going to take my Brainstorm. If it doesn't work, I'll just play Tarmogoyf and leave up Force of Will for another turn. But yeah, no problem. All right, so Tarmogoyf can go back. And I actually do like the Wasteland quite a bit. I could dance around a little longer around the Plague Engineer, but I feel like that's starting to tempt fate a bit. Though I really do think that their card in hand is Abrupt Decay. Uh, do I want the Wasteland or not? I think I do want it, just... But I am going to cast Plague Engineer this turn. Alright, I'm going to stop Tempting Fate and just put my Plague Engineer on the stack. I think I want Bayou out of this. In case they have Choke, this at least gives me two lands to play on. Even if they have the Decay, this will kill two things on its way in. And then they'll be Hellbent with a Nettle Sentinel. Dryad Arbor is the fetch. Interesting. Why would they fetch that in response to Plague Engineer? I don't understand. Maybe they're trying to trick me into naming Dryad instead of Elf. Like if I somehow think that's more important. But of course I do not. Alright, so if they have Abrupt Decay, that kills Plague Engineer, untaps Nettle Sentinel, they get to bash for three, I'm at five. But then I have the, the moats. <laughs> Two Tarmogoyfs. Alright, yeah, they're just conceding. Good enough. Yeah, they never really found a payoff. Uh, game 2, they didn't really have a window to pay off because I had removal for the Shepherd and Force the Will most of the time that it mattered. But yeah, game 1, they just wrecked off. Game 2, we controlled it really well. On to the next round. On the draw for round number 3. We have a hand with uh, Ponder and Plague Engineer and Force of Negation. So Force of Negation will keep us kind of safe against unfair stuff. Plague Engineer will keep us kind of safe against fair stuff. So this has a nice split of things that the deck offers, and then a ponder to, to glue the room together. Alright, a main deck Bajuka Bog. This is Depths, Lands, something with crop rotation. So the leading on Bajuka Bog is a pretty significant sign of weakness. 
So I could just fire off this wasteland, get out of here, uh, we're done. Or I could save the wasteland for the inevitable dark depths that's coming. If I wasteland now and just two turns from now they cast Life from the Loam, it's going to feel pretty bad. But I think that this big en this is a big enough sign of weakness that I just want to shred the bog. Just the opportunity to cheese them out is pretty nice. And I have Force of Negation, which lines up really well against Life from the Loam, if you hadn't heard. All right, there's the Depths. So, Depths confirmed. Let's see if I blew it by spending that Wasteland on the Bog instead of the, the Depths. But this is two turns now that they've developed without actually being able to cast any spells or make any mana. I don't need a second Force. Uh, Leovold isn't great here. I like the land, but I already have a land, and Sylvan Library is coming down next turn, so I'm just going to shuffle here. All right, found the land anyway. I do play a lot of them. The one super important thing about my hand right now is that... Oh, okay. Uh, Force of Negation can't counter a crop rotation on their turn, or on my turn. So if they crop rotate in an end step, I'm in trouble. All right, how can I beat Merit Lage in the main deck? without wasteland there's two assassins trophies in the deck and i mean that's it after board i get sudden edict but and run afoul so after board I, I have a lot of tools without wasteland i can force some negation this or i can just let them have it and try to find a trophy before they make the lage i'm gonna take that plan Though land, spirit guide, or lotus petal gets them where they want to go next turn. A little worrisome, but we got this. I do believe that moving in on Sylvan Library is the way to see the most cards this game. Alright, so I just gotta hope they don't land, accelerate, make a main phase lage right now. And with Wasteland off the table, I could also Abrupt Decay this, or Witherbloom Command this, and ooh, I probably should have played a Black Land last turn, because if I find Witherbloom Command, then I get to uh, destroy Pithing Needle, pick up Wasteland. Okay, yeah, this definitely should have been Underground Sea or Bayou. Didn't think about the, the multi-turn plan. This is probably one that's worth forcing. Sucks to lose a Brainstorm, but I do have Sylvan Library in play. Like, I, I don't want to just lose having never fired off my Force when I had a chance. Yeah, the, that weakness they showed early on, really developing here when they just missed this land drop. Alright, found the Witherbloom Command. I can put the Trop on top, I don't need that. I'll pay for a life to keep one of the lands. And then next turn, I can do the, the Witherbloom thing. I'm just going to Uro now. Next turn, I could also just Uro, depending on how they develop. But the Witherbloom command, picking up Wasteland, I think will end the game if they don't make Merit Lage right now. All right. That still loses to... Right. Let's just find Assassin's Trophy. Uh, Abrupt Decay is not quite it. I put on top and do I want to A4? Yeah, I mean, 20 is 20. I, I can't get above 20 life this turn anyway. So, Witherbloom Command. Destroy target. Target player mills three. Destroy target non land, non creature permanent. So, I mill three. Destroy this. If they make Merit Lage in response to this, I'm going to lose. Like if they have the Spirit Guide. Wow, pick up that Wasteland, it happened. Okay, uh, now we're in business. Uh, that that should do what we need it to. And I'm going to cast Harmogoyf right now. Start beating down. Going to have to win this game somehow. Goyf's in. It's a 5-6. Let's party. Wow, Witherbloom Command, huh? That, I think, we'll have a hard time doing better than that. <laughs> I gotta say. If they have a second needle right now, they can get Merit Lage. Inquisition me. Uh, yeah. 
I don't care about that. Uh, I probably would have taken Decay, because their plan to win this game is gonna... Okay, they just had two things. That's fair. I was about to say, their plan to win this game has to be find another Pithing Needle. And... Oh, they didn't take the Decay either. Interesting. Curious. So Sylvan Library is going to trigger. Good thing they didn't take Decay. I found another one. All right. Uh, put on top and put on top. I don't need to be spending tons of life at this point in the game. Uh, I want Uro. I want to fetch first, though. Because I want a chance to draw a land to play the Strix as well. Uh, I should probably attack with my 5-6 before I make it any smaller. Goyf's in for 5. Second main, we go to Urotown. So, blue, green. Hold on, hold on. I can do better. There's an Urborg in play. Green, green, blue, blue. Because this is a... Uh, Tropical Island is a tri-land right now. They have land, artifact, sorcery, so I can exile any number of lands, artifacts, or sorceries from my graveyard and still be okay. Alright, Goyf, the size of Goyf didn't change. Perfect. If Uro hits a land here, alright, I'm not going to cast Strix if it taps me out of Wasteland. But Strix does buy me turns, even if they do sneak the Merit Lage in through my Wasteland, I can block it a couple times with Strixes. Hex Mage. So I'm going to let them have that because I can Abrupt Decay this to force the exchange. I guess I just attack for a bunch first. Let's find a second Wasteland. That would really do what I needed to. Yeah. All right, top, top, bang. All right, now we just attack. They don't really have blocks. Uh, this is, I mean, they can block and make the Merit Lage force one of the Wastelands. Maybe I should just decay before blocks, put them on a two-turn clock. But they're on a two-turn clock anyway. Yeah, they're, even if they chump, make Merit Lage, force one of the Wastelands here, they still just lose next turn. All right, I'm going to let them go to their turn with the Hex Mage. Just having the, de uh, I could have cast a few of these Strixes. <laughs> I, I was just... Planning how to not die to Merit Lage. Okay, so here we are. Uh, get to force this interaction, which they knew about. They left me with this Abrupt Decay off those multiple discard spells a few turns ago, and now they will burn for it. I guess I could have let this resolve and also just decayed the Needle. All right, they t removed all the permanents from Uro. Sure. And then... Destroy Depths in response. Alright. I figured it out. <laughs> Activate my Wasteland. Got it. Maybe I should have gone for a stage first. Uh, because if they have a second Depths in hand, they could like play it, make Merit Lage after the the Needle resolves. All right. Maybe I didn't play that last turn perfectly, but they just didn't have anything, and that's cool. Alright, Edict and Run Afoul both answer Merit Lage. That's partially what they're for. Plague Engineer on Vampire does cut an entire angle of their deck off. I think Flusterstorm is better than Force of Negation for the matchup because a lot of their crop rotating they want to do on my turn. Veil of Summer stops uh, discard spells and abrupt decays. What is not as important here? Witherbloom Command was phenomenal. That was that was a really good Witherbloom Command. I'm still impressed, still thinking about it. I don't think Days is where I want to be in the matchup. This is currently a 60 card deck. Do I want the third Engineer? Because they could also have Sylvan Safekeeper. Like a number of X, like X1s padding an Edict is one of the ways they can dance around what I'm doing, like my interaction. I mean, Fatal Push does hit all of those same things. Sometimes these decks have Dark Confidant in them. Uh. Is Ooze the worst card left, or is Leovold the worst card left? Leovold pitches to force, but Ooze actually... Like, if they're... Sometimes these decks have Loam in them also, uh, to rebuild their combo. I think Leovold's probably the worst card left in the deck right now. 
do I want the second library, I guess, is another decision. Uh, Fatal Push is also kind of sus when I have all of these other removal spells that do more for the matchup. I think I'm going to cut a push for an extraction. Like, if I can cheese a Wasteland extraction on a Dark Depths or Stage, that takes a lot out of their deck, too. Okay. This is what I'm going to do. Urkel's Recall also has a small argument if I need to bounce Pithing Needles. Alright, I have Edict and Brainstorm. This is a hand that you keep against Depths. Like if they have a discard spell, they can take Edict, but then I get to keep Brainstorm, and vice versa. They mold a 5 too, so that's good for me. Needle on Wasteland, you got it. Okay, cool. So, hopefully they just have a turbo hand that just makes a, a Depths on makes a Merit Lage on turn two with no backup. Just They just go Depths Hex Mage here, and then Sudden Edict mops the floor. I can even hide my Edict with a... Ooh. Do they double up on Wasteland, or do they name Misty Rainforest with this? I'll just fetch Tropical Island to be sure. They have Urborg, so Trop is the, the full Triome right now. They'll probably just double up on Wasteland, would be my guess. But they could have tried to stone rain me. Which isn't even really a stone rain because of Urborg. Uh, I'm just going to play my land and pass here. Brainstorm cleaning up this hand. Like, Fatal Push doesn't really do much. The This is a lot of lands to have. Yeah, so I'm going to Brainstorm in the end step here. This Sudden Edict looks like it's going to do what we want. I found a Wasteland... They don't really need, uh, it, actually with the, the double, the double needle, I actually actively don't want Wasteland at all. It is in fact, even worse than Fatal Push. So I'll get another trap because they continue just functioning as triomes. Oh, wow. Unfortunate. Yeah. So at this point we have two answers to Merit Lage and a clock to back it up on the other side. Uh, I think we're going to win this game. I have like pretty reasonable confidence that that is the case. I'm going to start with Run Afoul, because Sudden Edict can also get random shitters, like um, if they have a Hex Mage or Dark Confidant or, you know, whatever. Like, Edict just gets more things. Run Afoul only gets Merit Lage. And now I get to Tarmogoyf and Pound. Got that Force of Will back up. Here comes Goyf. I'm not going to cast Ponder, just in case I need to Edict. I can't imagine what sequence would result in me needing to Edict here. Uh, I guess, like, what two-card sequence? I guess there are three-card sequences that could do it, but... Yeah, if I had looked at their... The number of cards in their hand probably would have got away with it, but that was, uh, like with three cards they could go Spirit Guide, Spirit Guide, Crop Rotation, and make a Depths, but I don't think there's a two-card sequence. Are there any sorceries in the graveyard? There are not currently sorceries, so let's make Goyf a little bigger. Force of Will, Flusterstorm, Uro. I don't actually want any of these. I want a land. Alright, didn't get there on the land. Here comes my attack. They should be extremely suspicious of this attack because obviously they could just block. I can ponder again. I have the mana to edict still. I do want to hit my land drops. The Veil of Summer is nice, but land drops are better. Okay, your turn. Surgical Extraction targeting Run Afoul. <laughs> I got bad news for you, friend. I only play one of those. Womp 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 womp. And now they know that they can't Merit Lage. But... Like, so they're not just going to ram Merit Lage into Edict. What they're going to do is look for a discard spell to clear the Edict first. And I'm going to force a discard spell if they have one, and then get these Tarmogoyfs to work. Sucks that they just shuffled away my Veil of Summer with the 
the surgical because that is the card that would have really locked this up for me. It's getting to shrug off discard spells. Burrow puts me over 20 life as well. Currently no creatures in the graveyard. Uh, this? Yeah, I think Uro's a good start. Green, blue, colorless. Yeah, this puts me over 20. It puts a creature in the graveyard for Tarmogoyf. And swing for the fences. So there is this giant ballsy play I could make, which is ponder to hit my land drop. And even if the ponder misses, I could go to one off of a Merit Lage hit. I can't force of will then. I think I just hold the ponder. <laughs> Relax, Brian. Though, I think, I, I think that play is fine to make, but I'm a coward, so I'm just not going to make it. Inquisition of Kozilek. This is what force of will is for. If they have Veil of Summer for that. Okay, they didn't. No worries. So I can bring back Uro this turn and be above 20 life again. Surgical Extraction. Uh, that doesn't really help because they, their whole combo is still in play. Uh, they, w Because of Urborg, they can make Merit Lage with what they have right here. I don't think I bring back Uro, actually. I think that I ponder looking for a Veil of Summer to protect me from discard. I will take a Brainstorm, though, because I get a Shuffle with that. I get the Tropical Island, the, the Triome again. And then if I Brainstorm, I don't get to also Goyf unless I hit the land. All right, let's Brainstorm. I uh, didn't hit the land. That sucks. Uh, okay. I blew my chance to play Tarmogoyf this turn. I can't draw cards at instant speed. There is this, like, giant, another, like, giant swinging balls play, which is I put Sudden Edict on top of my deck, and that lets me play around discard for a turn. But if they just, like, YOLO, make the Merit Lage, then I lose. I don't think I can do that. I am not brave enough for that one. Uh, so I attack for four. Uh, yeah, I think this is a fine sequence because even if they do find the discard spell for the Merit Lage, Uro will put me to 22 life or 21 life after I fetch. I guess I don't need to fetch. All right, they found it. So there's that. So I've been to rest. They get to take the Edict. Uro puts me to... More life, though that brainstorm play hiding the edict would have worked. By the way, just giant thousand IQ plays. All right, so they are playing around Assassin's Trophy. They've seen what's in my deck. They know what answers I have and what answers I don't have. So, pretty sure I win though. So now I can. Oh, they had another depths in hand. That doesn't really matter though. So I can surgical extraction their thespian stage. Just uh, paying mana, of course, because my life points all matter. I'm going to take a look at their deck and figure out how I can lose. Uh, I don't see the line where I can lose this game, because Fatal Push can clear a blocker on the following turn. And, okay. Um, oh, I guess Vampire Hexmage is how I can lose. If they attack with this 2020 and then play Hex Mage and make another 2020 to block. That is how I can lose this game. All right, uh, I don't have the breathing room to put Plague Engineer into play, but I can go green, green, blue, blue. Uh, they have Sorcery Instant Land, so I can eat Sorcery's Instance and Lands. Here's a row. 22 life and go here it is moment of truth vampire hex mage versus my deck they could also just not attack that is a, an option available to them like if they just don't draw hex mage if they just leave merit lage back on d okay yeah they, that's the line but that then i get the plague engineer to mop up 
And so I can Tarma Goif, Backup Goif, and Plague Engineer on Vampire. And I think that closes the door on their out. I don't think they have another way to deal two damage to me as a surprise. I didn't see the fling or the rights of consumption or anything that some of these decks have played in the past. But I guess I, I didn't specifically look for it. Maybe it was hiding in there. Uh-oh, they're attacking. Either they do have something and I just didn't see it on the in the deck, or they're dead and they just want to get their Merit Lage swing in. Sylvan Scrying. Oh god, do they have a Barbarian Ring? City of Brass, okay. They're just trying to hurt themselves. White. There's no white cards in this deck. I think they're just memeing. Yeah, okay. Just causing as much pain as possible on the way out. GG's. Alright, on to round number... Uh, four. <laughs> yeah, forgot about one. Round number four is coming. On the play, in the fourth round, I have a perfectly reasonable cantrip lands in a threat hand. Not going to cast this ponder because I don't know what I'm looking for yet. Alright, it looks like we're doing the death and taxes thing. Oh yeah. So, uh, between Witherbloom Command and Abrupt Decay and Assassin's Trophy, this deck has significantly more answers to an Aether Vial than average. Burrow's a nice one. So I could just shove Tarmogoyf into play and begin the beats. Or I can brainstorm now while the getting's good. Yeah, I think brainstorming makes more sense. Because if once they get Thalia in, it's going to be a lot harder to do anything. And I want to sculpt up my hand to be full of removal spells before they get set up. Like so. Uh, Wasteland is kind of hit and miss. Uh, I actually don't want Wasteland because the Witherbloom command is likely to buy back a land. Burrow's great. I think I can live without Force of Will for this matchup. And then I'm going to also ponder here. So I'm set up with all my colors and redundancy of all my colors. Plague Engineer, don't mind if I do. Okay, so Plague Engineer is insane in this matchup, and I feel like I'm pretty well set up. If they Wasteland me, it means that they don't cast Thalia. And if they cast Thalia, then I get to Plague Engineer. So good stuff's happening in, in every direction right now. Being on the play mattered a lot in this matchup, so I'm glad that happened. There's Thalia. Got you covered. Got the Mother of Runes in hand also covered. Uh, just going straight in. I think I want the Bayou to just cover the spread of colors so they can't take me off any spells with a single port or wasteland. Name human. And you're out of here. Goodbye Thalia. So even if they plow it right away, that's still a two for one. I still get to answer the Aether Vial next turn. Pick up a land perhaps. Trophy is ready for whatever weapon they pull off of the Stoneforge Mystic. The trophy can kill Batterskull outright, the actual equipment, if they get Cauldra complete. Hitting the germ is fine. Oh wait, no it's not because it's indestructible. I take it all back. We're never winning if they get Cauldra into play. So I'll have to fight over the Stoneforge if they have Cauldra. Yeah, the Sudden Edict is the only good answer to a Cauldra that I have. And even that's not really a good answer because their deck is full of creatures. So I'm going to Wither Bloom to rebuy a land and get rid of their Aether Vial that's currently on two. Got to figure out which of these text boxes does that. Uh, it's the first one. Mill three, return our land, destroy a non creature, non land permanent. Okay, so I mill, we get rid of Vial. And I think I want to keep the black mana up no i want to keep it doesn't matter i'm rebuying a land i guess i want to keep the green up because i want to cast harmogoyf this turn so black green they can violence stoneforge mystic here uh, that's the only two drop that doesn't die immediately to plague engineer and then we can see what they get with this and decide if i need to leave up assassin's trophy or not uh they do they did get cauldra so Indestructible, equipped creature gets plus five, plus five, trample haste, indestructible. Okay, 
So I do need to kill the the Stoneforge Mystic. I'm just gonna get Underground Sea. No reason to get a fetch land and take extra damage here. So gotta kill the Stoneforge. Cause can't beat the weapon with my deck. Let me just make sure that's true before I do something silly. Uh yes. That is accurate. Alright. Unfortunately I ramp them. Fortunately it's a seven drop. Wish that was fatal push, but you don't get everything. And I might just need to sit on Force of Will forever. Uh just to make sure the next Stoneforge Mystic doesn't hit me. Or doesn't come into play. I think if I can beat Cauldra, I'll beat this deck. That's how I'm feeling right now. They had a Wasteland, sure. So they can have pretty good control over what I'm doing. If they port my green source, then I can brainstorm with it. Which makes sense because they wasted a green source, so they're just trying to take me off a of color. That's a green source. I'm going to tuck the Uro and the Goyf. Uh, definitely the Goyf. And I guess the Brainstorm. Which would I rather pitch to Force, I guess is the question. I would rather pitch Brainstorm to Force if I have to do one or the other. And Leovold. All right, I'm, I, my draw step's still coming. So Leovold is really good against this deck because Rashad and Port ca targets me every turn. Wasteland targets me. If they try to remove Leo, I draw a card and then I can force the plow if I want to. That'll be a game time decision. I'm pretty worried about this Cauldra, but at the same time, having a Vold in play is messed up. Right, here comes some three mana spell. Skyclave Apparition. I feel like that's probably too good. Yeah, I'm going to get rid of that and I'm going to pitch Brainstorm. So, like... I guess I could still lose to, if they did just juke me and there's a Stoneforge Mystic in their hand, I deserve to lose. But Force of Will wouldn't have helped me there anyway, because it's all Aether Vial related. I just got to hope they don't have a Stoneforge Mystic. In for five and pass the turn and you don't activate Aether Vial, please. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Okay, good. Just, just Charming Prince. You can't scare me like that, opponent. That was rude, and I don't abide by it. Little 1-1 one, one Charming Prince. So next turn, I can Aro, or I can Strix plus Goyf, or they port me and I draw a card and then make decisions after that. Alright, a 3-mana card this is probably Apparition. Oh, it's just Recruiter of the Guard spewing into the graveyard, probably to get Stoneforge Mystic to try to get this Cauldron into play. That would be my guess. Or they could search for Apparition and try to remove Plague Engineer. Okay, they did search up Apparition. Are they more worried about Leo or Engineer? The answer is Leo. Yes, I'll draw a card. Oh, wait, no. The answer was Plague Engineer. Okay. Engineer is gone. You got it. I have another one in the deck. We'll be alright. Ooh, no attacks. Yeah, you need that double block. Alright, so I can ponder into land for Uro. Or I can just Uro and hope for the best. Or I could Strix Goyth and just turtle up here. Because Uro is soft against the Plow. Uro is also soft against Caracas. But they haven't made a land drop in 100 turns. So I don't think I have to worry about Caracas. Yeah, I think just making Uro happen makes some sense. Though going wide also makes some sense, and sculpting my hand while they don't have Thalia in play makes sense. Yeah, I think I'm going to lead on Ponder, actually. Uh, Day's Fatal Push and Wasteland. Uh, Day's... All of these cards actually kind of play. Like, the Wasteland turns on the Fatal Push... Okay, I have a plan. I'm going to keep these three. Do not shuffle my library. Cast Baleful Strix. Blue Black. Strix draws a card. I have Wasteland, and I'm going to attack with Leovold. If they double block, I'm going to blow them out with Fatal Push. Uh, okay, 
and it doesn't really matter what I target. I don't have Revolt, so I can just go after the, the Prince, but I could have wasted them to get Revolt. Like, that doesn't really matter. And I'm going to take out the Rashad and Port right now. Okay, that was a reasonable turn cycle. And the Aether Vial is not on two, so I don't have to worry about Surprise Stoneforge Mystics. All right, they conceded. Yeah, Cauldra Complete is a complete beating against this deck. What answers do I have to that? Uh, Hercules Recall does in fact answer that uh flag engineer is great in the matchup sudden edict i guess if i can remove every other creature which is a possibility with this deck like i could remove everything except that yeah that's pretty good so these three come in for sure force negation comes out for sure days is also pretty bad especially on the draw i do like force of will against Death and Taxes, uh, that hasn't been true for all of history, but it's been true for quite some time that magic cards are just built different now. Uh, I think Run Afoul, they, are, they do have Flicker Wisps in their deck, and Flying could be hard for me to deal with. Run Afoul, like, it's kind of unconventional, but it's pretty good, though Plague Engineer can answer Flicker Wisps forever. Are there any flyers in this deck other than Flicker Wisp? I don't think so. Not with the current iterations. And yeah, none of their equipment grants flying. If Cauldra, if the Cauldra equipment's granted flying, I'd be in, but they don't. So Sylvan Library is an option. Is having long-term selection against a deck like Death and Taxes that has very little in the terms of selection is good. Uh, having a two-drop against the Thalia deck is less good. But it's still fine. It's probably still better than Days. And I probably want to leave one Days in the deck to keep them honest. The next card I would bring in is like Narset. And I don't think I need to do that. This is the plan. Right, Fatal Push is great. Wasteland is strong. Yeah, Uro. This is a good hand. How about Witherbloom Command, by the way? Wiping out Aether Vial? That's something. Right, so they have an Aether Vial. I have a land. Now we have to do this kind of annoying dance around the Aether Vial where I don't get to jam my turn to play. Like, I don't just get to jam Strix on two. Because if they Vial in Mother of Runes in the end step, I need to be able to answer it. All right. Do I want to be a Wasteland deck? I think so. Yeah, I'll just take out this Caracas right now. If they vial in Mom, I can kill it. So if they have a Wasteland of their own, I'm going to feel pretty bad facing down Aether Vial. Yeah, it's just now or never. Underground Sea, Fatal Push. Yeah, if they have Wasteland or Port, I'm going to regret wasting them. But I, I got aggro. Sometimes you get punished for getting aggro. Uh, Mother of Ruins, probably should have forced that. Yeah, that was really bad. Definitely should have forced that. I was just busy narrating and didn't play the game. So I can Sylvan Library. I think that's probably my best investment right now. Uh, let's just hope they can't vial in Stoneforge Mystic right now. Uh-oh, Cauldra's about to be complete. Charming Prince one time. Oh, it was Thalia. That's weird. Why wasn't that in play already? I wouldn't have gotten to cast Sylvan Library if they just did that. Okay. Deal. So Thalia picks up the sword. Vile stayed on two. Ooh, the second flagstones. They're combo comboing off over there. I definitely think a mistake was made by not just violing in the Thalia on the main phase. Unless they think connecting with Jitte is more important than constricting my resources, which, I mean, I, I can see my hand and they can't, so maybe they're onto something, but I don't think so. I'm looking for a land plague engineer. That's the play here. I found the land. Uh, I don't need to pay a lot of extra life here because I have a shuffle and I have an Uro anyway. And I think Uro is better than Baleful Strix because of the, the life gain and Strix just dies to the Jitte. And putting ahead on mana is pretty important in this position. Now I can Force of Will if I want to because I found that land. 
obviously not gonna wasteland flagstones of trocare okay vile didn't tick up or vile didn't activate we're not dead uh cauldra is terrifying a messed up card Urkel's recall would be insane on this board though just reset the jitte reset the vile get out of here hopefully they just pile up counters on jitte nope they are pushing for damage all right they know how to clock I would have preferred if they just stockpile counters for some reason, but that doesn't make a whole lot of sense to do, especially with Sylvan Library in play. My life total... Life totals are always a resource, but my life total is a huge resource right now. Come on, Plague Engineer. Um, So I can put... How do I play the most spells this turn? If I miss my land drop, I can Strix into Tarmogoyf. I think that's fine if i make my land drop what happens i could just keep oh i have a strix in my hand already chill out man all right put on top put on top uh, i can use one of these other many strixes in my hand to to cast the goif so black blue baleful strix draws tarmogoyf tarmogoyf comes into play still holding up force of will Got deeper into my deck. I have a 3-4, which does not block Thalia. It has First Strike and Jitte. Uh, that makes Goyf bigger. And now I can block Thalia. Though they have Mother of Runes. Uh, I actually still can't block Thalia because they first they plus 2, plus 2, put 4 First Strike damage on Tarma Goyf. First Strike damage puts 2 counters on Goyf, then they minus 1, minus 1. Goyf. And they don't even need the Mother of Runes. So they're just going to bash here, and I am not going to block. We're just in the in the market for that Plague Engineer. Ooh, they don't see it. All right, yeah, they, they just don't know how that works. Cool. I'll take it. Plague Engineer, please. Witherbloom Command kills things. Okay, so put on top. Put on top. So I do want to do the uh, Strix cantrip game. So blue, black, here's a Strix. I should have cast Witherbloom Command first because now Jete can just kill Strix for free, but I think it's fine. And then destroy target thing and I'm going to do the mill. Uh, target player mills three and destroy target non-creature and non-land permanent. All right. I will mill three. I will destroy Umazawa's Jete. Black, green, Thali attacks. Yeah, so they can destroy my Strix on the way out because I sequenced wrong. And I think that I would rather have more colored sources than answer their Rashad and Port. I already have a Wasteland in play too, which you know, I'm already not using. So well, no reason to start now. Okay, so I can Uro next turn, get that work in. Uh, I'm looking at all fresh cards off of the Sylvan Library because of the Mill 3. So Plague Engineer is is the sweeper I'm looking for. I will happily just put Uro into play if they don't if I don't find it. This game looks pretty good, but we are in a constant battle of they could put Cauldra Complete into play. Uh, this is a Force of Will. Uh, get Underground Sea, I guess. I'd rather pitch Strix or Brainstorm. Probably Strix. Yeah, Brainstorm just does more. I'm looking for specific cards at this point. They have a First Strike creature and a Mother of Runes. Baleful Strix isn't really holding this board down. Show me the Plague Engineer. Plague Engineer. Alright, fine. Okay, so... Top. Top. Put both of these on top. I'm just going to go straight to Uro Town. Uh, green, green, blue, blue. Opponent has creature, land, artifact. So I can exile creatures, lands, and artifacts. Land, um, I have multiple artifact creatures, that's great. Land, artifact, creature. Okay. Goyf is the same size as when I started. This Uro finds a land. 
which gets to find cast ponder uh, i know that verdant catacombs is the top card of my deck uh i think i would rather leave the fetch land up for this ponder there we go no shuffle so i win the game next turn unless they complete cauldra right now file didn't activate no problems so they could have been slow rolling a swords to plowshares to deal with this uro i don't think they've been slow rolling caracas because they have missed several land drops i think they would have just developed if they could but plow could happen uh yeah i'm gonna fetch okay sure yeah they played that really well uh with the thalia they know that i can't force of will their plow right there so they did a good job making sure their plow resolved luckily that was not really my plan it was all a distraction what i will block okay all right they're just pushing damage right now that makes a lot of sense uh they must have the read that i have like engineer in hand because i did keep the ponder and that's the best card in my deck so that was a really good attack uh they really heads up uh sylvan library just bounty of riches here so I can Plague Engineer, Uro, but not also Tarmogoyf. Not unless I pay life. But at this point, I think I can pay life. Keep it all. Opponent, you should be shitting your pants right now. All right. Blue, green, colorless. All right, if this finds the land and I get to also Goyf here, we're going to have a good time. It did not. That's fine. And I'm going to Plague Engineer. I'm not going to re uro Because this is just so good. We name the humans. We wipe them out. They're gone. And we win. Yeah, they literally conceded to that. Well done. Out controlling Death and Taxes. Plague Engineer. Complete house. On to the final round. It's the final round. We're playing for 4 and 1. I'm on the draw with it. This no lander that I'm going to ship. There we go. I'm going to keep this and send one of the dazes. There's not many matchups where you want to daze twice, especially with a mid-range deck like this. Ooh, Dragon's Rage Chandler. Is this our chance to redeem ourselves from the round one crushing at the hands of Blue Red Delver? So I think that my hand already does relevant things, so I don't really need to ponder. I don't want to expose myself to Wasteland if I could just you know, stick a Baleful Strix instead. This preordained potentially seeing three cards is really cool. The Surveil on Dragon's Rage Channeler has been the most impressive part of that card in practice so far. Scalding Tarn. So they can play around Daze. They could Daze my Strix and not get Dazed themselves. Uh, luckily, Dragon's Rage Channeler is not a pretty, not a very significant clock. This will almost never attack for three on turn two the way Delver does. What's up, Uro? Good to see you. So if one of these gets dazed, which one would I prefer it to be? Um, Tarmogoyf doesn't get bolted. Uh, I guess the Strix being a two for one. Okay, so if they have bolt, I'd prefer they bolt Strix. Though Tarmogoyf doesn't die to bolt. Uh, yeah, okay. They did in fact have the daze. Yeah, the Tarmogoyf I think will be better going along. Because this puts an artifact and a creature in the graveyard, and then Goyf is just, like, thoroughly unboltable. And this thing is still... Uh, they can fetch for their third permanent or third card type. A Mishra's Bauble sets it off. Uh, if a creature dies, it gets set off as well. So they're actually pretty close to Delirium here. Ragavan with Dash. Okay, so even if I daze it... Okay, so if I daze this thing they get to channel and dash it returns in their end step so they can't use the treasure to cast ragavan this turn i think that resolving my tarmogoyf is more important than uh stopping this ragavan from connecting once all right if they ever find a black or green mana that's a good one for them to have or is it cast this turn all right, maybe it just doesn't matter what they have. All right, so now it's time for Tarmogoyf to shut this game down. 
I got two dazes to protect this Mamma Jamma. It's unboltable. It's the biggest creature you've ever seen. Do I want to ponder? Yeah, probably. Sucks I can't get Bayou to ponder here. I will get the Underground Sea, because I think black will be more important than green as far as spells go. Like, most of my spells are black and green, but, like, exactly Fatal Push gets cast off black or green. I shuffled that ponder, by the way. I'm in the business of removal spells at this point. So they can, if they dash Ragavan, they can't, they can put me in a position where if I block Channeler, or they get a Ragavan trigger, and if I block Ragavan, Channeler is on. So that's kind of an interesting call, but they didn't make it. They also could have just dashed Ragavan, let me block it, turn on Channeler for the future. They hit their land drop off of Iteration, the Dream. Uh, they're spending two mana on something. I'm probably going to daze it. Or they could be dashing the Ragavan here. Marktide Regent. I'd like to report a murder. So dazing a, a seven drop feels pretty good. Wow, right in the graveyard. And this thing will never be delirious now. I guess they still have three spells. Uh, if they cast a sorcery, it'll be delirious. So, wow. Not bad. Uh, I would like to arrow this wasteland into play, I think. All right, so Goyf. Uh, Uro triggers, plays Wasteland. I do want to waste them. Just giving them fewer options feels good. And Goyf is going to stay back because I know they're still sitting on that Ragavan. I don't want to get dashed and let them pull out of this with uh, Treasures and card advantage. Yeah, Ponder turns this on. Uh, so they're actually really close. Or Chain Lightning, Tarfire. Tarfire sends it into the Stratosphere. I don't know if these decks have adopted Tarfire or if that was just too cute. Okay, so here we are. These three one drops versus one Tarmo boy. Right, I'm gonna ponder to start this off. Witherbloom command is nice here. Oh, 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 oh. What does that do? Uh, these are human shamans. That's a monkey pirate. Okay, this doesn't do anything yet, but I'm very interested in it for next turn. All right, don't shuffle. I'll play my Bayou. And Uro is available for next turn. I can trophy one of the Dragon Rage channelers if I need to. Uh-oh, did they ponder? Oh, Expressive Iteration does the same thing. So I'm going to let them get their surveils off before I do anything else. I'm going to end up trophying one of these channelers, I'm pretty sure. Do I want them to iteration with that information? Uh, no, I would prefer they... So the, the trade-off here is if iteration finds a protection spell, then they get to rage. But if they don't know they need a protection spell, it could be pretty good. All right, there's a, a line here where I... Green, black, destroy a channeler. If they fight over this, I can pick up the land they're trying to wasteland with days. All right, they didn't fight over it. Okay, fine. That's just gone. So Ragavan doesn't get to attack. Dragon's Rage Channeler has to attack. It's its first day, has to fight. And I get to daze something here. Another Murktide Regent. Do I get to report a second murder? Oh, ho, ho, ho. Oh, do they have the force this time? Nope. Wow, I dazed two Murktide Regents. And, and, folks, that turned off the Dragon's Rage Channeler. And I hope they don't have days. Because I would like to get this gone before it gets big again. All right, they did have the days. Okay, so that Wasteland they found was really clutch. And this does regrow the, the Rager. All right. Tarmogoy's still on D. A clutch Wasteland. Finding that off the iteration was insane. If I find a land, I get to Uro. Uh, so, notably, I did waste them several turns ago. I guess I have dazed them several times since then. Shit. God, these Wastelands. Okay. Finally, 
I, I think the tide is finally shifting. And do they have a third regent? Is that how this deck is built? Wow, a third regent. That one's going to land. Okay. I feel like I'm finally out of gas here. So they can attack for four. The ground creatures are still... are not good again. But they don't really have to be. And if I draw land and stick Uro, there might still be a chance. Alright, maybe not. Uh, they just need to put... Uh, oh, they need nothing. Uh, they need a fetch land. A land in the graveyard would have sent the channeler to the skies. But now even a row, like I take four, go to three. I'm dead to lightning bolt. If I fetch, I go to two. Fetch twice, I go to one. Then a row brings me up to four or five, respectively. Yeah, if I draw a actual dual land and not a fetch land, and their hand is nothing, then there's more game to play here. But I think the uh, the third Murktide region is going to do it here. So they played a land. Let's just draw a Tropical Island. Tarmogoyf, that's not it. All right, GG. Impressive. Yeah, the uh, Dragon's Rage Channeler surveilling, constantly fueling Murktide region is really interesting. Yeah, that's cool. I respect it. Okay, so Hydroblast, Plague Engineer, Bluster Storm, Carpet of Flowers. We've seen this before because we played against this matchup already. I don't think I want Narset. I think I do want Dothy Voidwalker against this specific build. Just pressuring their graveyard seems like something that they're going to have a lot of trouble with. Uh, Plague Engineer is the second tier of things, but I think I do want to make sure to make room for it. All right, forces of Negation and Will can get a lot thinner. The commands all look good. Days on the play is pretty good. Uh, what else gets cut here? Maybe I do have to go to zero forces. That leaves me pretty weak to the Regent, but I have run afoul, sudden edict, and a bunch of removal. I guess that is the plan instead. Uh, Wasteland, I feel like, is a trap more than it is actually good. Um, I'm my plan is to play a longer game, so maybe like days is pretty good in Delver Mirrors, but I am not a Delver deck. My plan is to go a little bigger, and I think that having days in my deck is going to end up hurting me more than helping me. Like I feel like it's a trap, much like the Wasteland is. So now I have some answers to a resolved Regent which I'm going to have to because I don't have ways to counter it anymore. Um, I can control their graveyard with Ooze and Voidwalker, but that's about all I got. I'm not going to bring in Surgical Extraction. I just think that card is really bad. I would like room for a Force of Will, but they're going to have Pyroblast. All right, I'm just going to go in with this stack. All right, on the play with a carpet, I'm keeping. I get to jam this carpet before they do anything else. They have to force it, and they probably boarded a lot of their forces out. Here it is. No days, no spell pierce. Carpet's in. That's a strong start. So if they waste me, I won't have any mana for a turn, but then neither will they, and that's fine. Right, playing off a mountain for a, for the turn. You can't daze off a mountain. So I can... I'm pretty sure I just want to ponder. If I can find Fatal Push, I can clean this thing up. Uh, Leovold's really good. It's not a removal spell, though, so I actually am just going to shuffle this up. Hey. That's the thing I said that I wanted. Uh, I'm going to let us go to their turn. I guess they could bolt me in response and get a Surveil. Which they wouldn't be able to do on my turn, but this at least plays around Force Negation. And they can dash Ragavan, I suppose, uh, which is a pretty strong play. Like, they can do it off that Wasteland, too. Okay. Not if they're just cracking off Wastelands, that's fine. Ooh. So, I am going to cast this Dothy Voidwalker. It's probably going to get Lightning Bolted, but then that leaves Scavenging Ooze to mop up afterwards. 
Voidwalker's in. Of course it's in because they can't daze because they play they're playing on a mountain. Ooh, it didn't get bolted. I guess they could have chain lightning. Yeah, there's the chain lightning. Sure. They can't play this game on zero islands forever. That's just a fact of life. Uh, still not going to activate this. Goyf is large and in charge. They can't daze. Well, I guess they can, but I get mana out of the deal. So they've stunted their own game plan for four turns now to play around Carpet of Flowers. And now I have a Tarmogoyf on an empty board. And because they haven't played any instants or sorceries, like even if they Mark Tied Regent right now, it'll just be a 3 3. And now they have to suddenly cast spells because they're facing down a 4 5. Now there's two islands in play suddenly. And I'm going to have millions of mana going into my turn. And Scavenging Ooze will control this graveyard. Pretty sure I want to get Ooze into play, make it a 4 4 immediately, and that's how I want to spend my mana on my turn. All right, so I'm not going to do this yet. I'm going to attack first. Because once the mana is floating, I have to use it. And if I use it, Goyf might get smaller. So yes, and make green. Scavenging ooze. Uh, I wanted to spend blue on that, so I had more green floating. But here we are. Now I have to fetch, which lets, leaves this susceptible to lightning bolt. Uh, that's annoying. All right. My fault. Magic Online took a shortcut that I didn't want it to. Alright, so because I can't exile two things now, I'm going to go after Ponder, because that will make Murktide Regent smaller. Oh, that sucks. That I don't want to call it a misclick, just missequence. Just, uh, I... Should have been able to exile three things and play around Lightning Bolt this turn, but now I just can't do anything and I have to pass the turn because I'm playing around days. So that that was kind of shitty, but it's okay. Figure it out. Here comes a, I think, 5-5 five, five Regent, probably. Yep. Would have been nice to control that with that at scavenging is. Let's just find Run Afoul. Uh, so that's a 5-5, five, five. Gorf still 4-5. Yes, let's use this ability make blue this time and blue blue green here's Uro. Uh they didn't pyroblast it that's good they probably want to save that for the second half now i can play a second goif around days and these goifs are gonna pretty effectively clock this region so I'd be surprised if they attack. Uh, Brainstorm's pretty good here. Their hand was clearly not doing anything they needed it to. So working backwards a little bit, the uh, if the Scavenging Ooze did what I wanted it to, this Murktide Regent would either be a 4-4, a 3-3, or not in play. And I would have a 4-4 Ooze. So the, the game would look very different. Still ahead because Carpet of Flowers was busted. Uh, yes, use the ability make blue 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 uh, they have instant creature in the graveyard so i can creature instant all right i can uro without changing the size of tarmogoyf so creature instant land land creature okay we're good Goyfs are still four fives they could red blast here yeah, that's fine. I think I want to brainstorm in response in case I find a fluster. Didn't find fluster. Found a carpet though, that's nice. Um, I'm gonna put back under and carpet. Oh wait, no. Um, under and goif. Like I could cast carpet now, and if they counter it, that puts an enchantment in the play, in the graveyard, and my goifs get to crush because they're five fours. Or five sixes. Or I could just wait a turn and try to continue out controlling this deck. That probably makes sense. I'm going to put Ponder and Carpet on top. Alright, Uro's countered. And I'm going to pass the turn. Baleful Strix is also an artifact. So I have an enchantment and an artifact waiting to make these Goyfs into six sevens. 
Uh, they just brainstormed, so this Delver should flip. They found another brainstorm. Still feel like we're ahead. Tarmogoyf is a, a serious monster for Blue Red Delver to deal with. Unless they have some submerges or a graveyard hate that I don't know about. So brainstorm resolved. They played a land, shuffled. Two cards left in hand over there. Uh, another regent would be pretty fucked, because, yeah, uh, they would, they'll both be 8 power now. Or no, the second one's 8 power, the first one is 6. Yeah, that's good. I respect that. Right, the race is on. Baleful Strix is going to have to do some heavy lifting here. Uh, yes, and make green mana? Do I want green? Do I want to make mana? So, fetch land is four cards in the graveyard. Uh, I think I want yes and make blue. Because that casts Strix and Ponder. All right, let me start with the green from this for the second carpet. They don't have force. I know that is true. Black. Here's Strix. Strix draws Ponder. Ponder puts cards in the graveyard for Uro. Uh, I don't want these lands. Uh, so I can play this land and Tarmogoyf. And then Uro, second main. I go to 8. I'm at 11 life. I'm dead to a Lightning Bolt on Baleful Strix. If I move on this Uro right now. I could do it main phase and see what I draw off the Uro and maybe cast more things. Uh, I think I just skip the Tarmogoyf. I think that is the answer here. And I cast Uro in the second main. Right, so yes, I can make green here. Maybe I still get the Tarmogoyf. Fetch, I'm at nine. I guess that makes me dead to bolt in a variety of ways, but I was already dead to bolt. It doesn't change anything. Right, uh, blue, blue. Uh, goifs are going to be zeros, but they're not helping right now anyway. Uh, found Leovold. So Uro's in play. I fetch to 11, uh, 8, 9, 10, 11, 6, 9. And I'm just dead to bolt in so many ways that it just doesn't even matter. So I might as well get my Tarmogoyf in play and try to threaten a lethal backswing. I hope they do Daze Goyf, because then they're Hellbent. They have cast two Lightning Bolts recently, so I have no faith that this is going to work. All right, Merc Titan Regent, I'm impressed. I take back everything I have said about this card being Tombstalker, because it is significantly more than Tombstalker. OK, so they're getting in for chip damage. Eight. 14. Uh, they're at 13. Uh, so Uro gets to draw a card. I'm going to take this block. This puts Artifact and Creature in the graveyard for my Goyfs. I get a draw step. Uro draws. I'm looking for Run Afoul or I guess Sudden Edict doesn't really help at this point. Plague Engineer. These are dragons. These are three fours. So I can name human. All right, so I'm going to use one of these and make black. And then I'll use the other to make blue. All right, so I get Leovold first, blue, black, green. Here's Leo. And then... Here's Plague Engineer. I'm going to name Human. So now the Edicts are alive. Uh, how many Goyfs do I want to lose? Um, they're three fours. I would lose them all, but they can just like chump or like just like eat a row. I would be pushing six damage across the board. If I draw a Run of Foul or Edict like I want to or Assassin's Trophy, then that's all. The Goyfs, I want them in the red zone. Uh, so I'm not going to show my opponent that. So if they block Uro and Goyf, that's still one card short in the graveyard. 
to replay the arrow. One, two, three, four, yeah. So I look pretty dead here. Yeah, bummer. That was close. Closer than it needed to be. They're gonna clap in for exact exactsies right now. Nice. Yeah, that was a crazy game. Murktide Regent, real good. Uh that's the card that was good there. I mean the Dragon's Rage Channeler and the Ragavan were playing support roles, but that was Murktide Regent's show. Yeah, I was away from doing anything there. Alright, so we got beat twice by Blue Red Delver and beat everything else. That's not a great place to be in Legacy right now. But the good news is if we just add some Assassin's Trophies, uh, like that, those are mostly just big flying creatures. Like, Run Afoul historically has been mostly Merit Lage hate, but if we have to beat like 8 8 dragons out of Delver now, Run of Foul's real good. It's also it's good early against the Delver. It's good late against the 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 Regent. You could play more sudden edicts if you want to beat the top end. Uh, this Narset never really came up. That could be something else. Uh, I I don't really other than like combo decks. I don't really see where where we would want Narset like slow combo decks. I don't know. Uh, it doesn't seem great uh, with the rest of the deck. So you could make this a second Run of Foul. Or Edict's probably better. So uh, I'll put a second Edict in the board there. There is a lot of removal in this deck. Um, I don't know if I'm sold on the Dazes. You probably want some number, but not that many really. Because you do want to hit your land drops most of the time. So that's where I would start. I would put a second Sudden Edict in this sideboard. Or maybe a second Run of Foul. Dealer's Choice. Uh, depending on what you think you're going to need to beat. Sudden Edict is much better against uh, Show and Tell and Reanimator because you can Sudden Edict and they can't Grizzlebrand in response. So that's a big deal. Uh, I'm not sure if Dothy Voidwalker was better than Scavenging Ooze would be in the sideboard. Um, also notable that uh, Scavenging Ooze uh, misclick, they ended up attacking me for Exaxes. They're dragon would have been one point smaller and i would have been one life point higher and i would have still had a 4-4 in play and controlling the board and future regents with it so the scavenging ooze misclick actually was devastating long term uh, even though it looked small at the time so uh important to uh play magic online correctly if you're gonna do that uh, thin margins and even just floating the wrong mana can cost a game but sweet deck um I'm not sure that this is where I would really want to be in the format. I feel like the tempo decks are extremely good right now. The combo decks are extremely good right now. The uh, the Urza Saga decks are extremely good right now. So just trying to play fair mid-range seems like a mistake because the aggro decks look like mid-range decks already. So uh, we're, we're basically opting out of having Delver in the deck without really gaining much in in terms of end game like we just saw murktide regent be insane uh urza saga can overpower an uro and a plague engineer and one for one removal spells like i think it's just a bad time to be doing fair mid-range things like either go all the way to the control end of the spectrum where you're just jamming like null rods and supreme verdicts or tempo with the rest of them because the tempo decks draw as many cards as the mid-range decks do right now so that's how i'm feeling about this deck it is fun i like bug uh, it is fun you get a lot of decision making a lot of control over stuff we got some sweet plays with wither bloom command i don't think this is where i would want to be in the format right now though so thank you hunter for submitting this deck thank you everyone else for watching if you have ideas to improve the deck or if saw like lines i could have done better as always let me know in the comments while you're here, like and subscribe, hit the notification bell so you know when new videos go live, and I'll see you next time.